This is deoxyribonucleic acid, also known as DNA. It was discovered in 1869 by Frederick Mischer, a Swiss biologist. Mischer was studying the chemical composition of white blood cells when he found a novel substance inside the nucleus which had unique properties. He called this substance nuclein and was later renamed as nucleic acid because of its acidic nature. Many scientists tried to study this molecule and found that nucleic acid is made up of repeating units called nucleotides. Each nucleotide contains a pentose sugar, a phosphate group and a nitrogenous base. Two types of nucleic acids were discovered. One contained ribose sugar, while the other type contained deoxyribose sugar. The importance of deoxyribose containing nucleic acid was not realized until 1944 when Oswald Avery and his colleagues showed that DNA is a genetic material that is passed on generation after generation. This was a significant accomplishment, but no one was able to understand how this molecule was able to store complex genetic information needed to create a living organism that is when james watson and francis crick proposed the double helix model of dna which provided key insights into how the genetic information is stored interestingly they made this discovery without conducting any experiments of their own instead they collected all the available data on the chemistry of dna to come up with this model watson and crick tried to understand how the nucleotides are assembled in dna by applying the laws of structural chemistry but this proved to be a very challenging task after multiple failed attempts they decided to abandon the project until in 1952 roslyn franklin a british chemist produced a high resolution x-ray diffraction image of dna This image was produced by bombarding purified DNA fibers with x-ray waves. The incoming x-rays strike the atoms arranged in the DNA and get scattered or diffracted. These scattered x-rays strike a film mounted behind the DNA sample. This film has a special coating which reacts with the incoming x-rays to form a pattern of dark spots. The pattern formed indicates the arrangement of the atoms in the DNA. Looking at this x-ray image Watson and Crick was able to find many clues on the structure of DNA. First, they understood that DNA is a double helix where two polynucleotide chains are arranged with their nitrogenous bases projecting into the center of the helix. Now you're probably wondering how can one make such a conclusion after looking at this image? Well, helical structures create a characteristic x-shaped diffraction pattern. that looks like this now when the molecule has a double helix structure some of the diffraction spots appear to be missing this is because some of the diffracted x rays from one strand interfere with that from the second strand the image produced by roslyn franklin had these missing spots that made it convincing that dna is a double helix the second feature inferred from the image is the distance between the stacked nitrogenous bases the distance from the center of the image to the broad mark on top depends on the spacing between the nitrogenous bases this value was calculated to be 0.34 nanometer the third feature which they noticed was that the helical turn repeats after every 3.4 nanometer this is known as the pitch of the helix The horizontal bars that you see in the diffraction image correspond to the helical turns. So the distance between these bars was used to calculate the pitch of the helix. Since the nitrogenous bases are stacked after every 0.34 nanometer, there would be 10 base pairs in one helical turn. With this the backbone of DNA was understood. All they needed to know now was how the nitrogenous bases are arranged to fit in this backbone. DNA contains four different nitrogenous bases: adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. In DNA, the number of guanine units equals the number of cytosine units. Similarly, the number of adenine units equals the number of thymine units. This observation was made by Erwin Chargaff in 1950 and is now called the Chargaff's rule. His findings suggested 
a structural complementarity that was extrapolated by Watson and Crick. They hypothesized that thymine pairs with adenine while cytosine pairs with guanine and these pairs would be held together by hydrogen bonds. This arrangement ensured that the bases fit together perfectly. With this, Watson and Crick's model was complete. The discovery of the double helix structure of DNA was the most important accomplishment of the 20th century. Based on this model, Watson and Crick suggested a copying mechanism for DNA where the two strands act as a template for the replication of new strands. This idea was proven experimentally in 1958 by Meselson and Starr. I'll be explaining Meselson and Starr's experiment in the next video, so stay tuned. If you like this video, do let me know by clicking the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.